How's it going, folks? Taylor Wilkowski here. In today's video, I'm going to be helping out a good friend of mine and a longtime animal foster. She's worked with her local animal shelter and has fostered hundreds of dogs. If you don't know what fostering is, that means you take them in from a shelter, bring them into your home, you can train them, help them with any kind of fear or aggression, or just get them more ready for adoption. So this foster took in this dog from another foster who was experiencing some resource guarding with this dog. Now this dog is a resource guarder of humans, which means that she's generally okay with other dogs, but if she's bonded with one human, she'll protect that human and resource from anything else. Now on top of that, this dog seems to be showing a lot of trust issues. She's very fearful of new people. She'll growl, snap, bark, even lunge after new people if they get too close to her. So that's where I come in. I'm gonna show you how I would personally work with this dog to show them how to counter condition this dog's fearful reaction to new things, especially new people. It's very important to understand that when a dog is growling or showing their teeth, they're telling us something. They're telling us they are afraid and we need to back up. It's imperative that you respect this dog's boundaries and back up when they ask you to. Over time, when you and this dog have worked together and bonded a bit more, you can start to push the limits a little bit. But until then, when you're first working with any fearful animal, when they ask you to back up using a growl, short lips, closed mouth, whale eyes, or anything like that, it's important to give them space. That growl is them communicating to us, I'm afraid I need you to back up. If we do not back up, you are at risk of causing this dog to lunge and bite. If that dog does lunge and bite, they learn a bad lesson and you have taught them that lesson. Remember, the dog that bites is the one at risk, not the human who caused the bite. After all, we're here to help the dog, not make it worse. So pay attention to those cutoff signals, those calming signals, and when the dog says, I've had enough. If you have a dog like this, or you know of a dog who acts somewhat like this, resource guarding over humans, or is just very fearful of strangers, then stick around while I explain how I would work with this dog to teach them that people are not scary. I'm going to counter condition the dog using positive reinforcement and a bit of pressure and release. So if you're ready for that, then let's get started. Okay, so we're outside here um, in the park in a nice open area. I hope you can hear me okay. I have Adonis here as my little demo dog. Um, and I chose to be out here because uh, you want to work with your dog in a nice open area. You don't want to work, um, you know, you can be in your backyard, your front yard, your house. Anywhere you are, you want to make sure that you have an open area. You don't want your dog to feel trapped or cornered. So say there was a, you know, a bunch of furniture here and my dog were right here and I were working with them. I want them to trust me and they may feel cornered and trapped. So anytime you work with your dog, especially inside, make sure they always have an exit path. Um, that way if they feel too, too much pressure, too much of my presence coming up to them, this is pressure, um, they can always move away. So Adonis moved away, not because I put pressure on him, he just wanted to move forward. <laughs> um, but say, if you're working with your dog like that and they move away, it's okay, let them move away. Don't drag them towards you. Um, just because they're fluffy doesn't mean consent, so don't expect to pet them right away. So if say he were growling and he were at the end of this leash because he, has, he wants nothing to do with me. If he does that, that's okay. I'll let him be at the end of his leash. I'll take some treats out of my pouch. I'll pack some towards him. He doesn't notice, but you want him to be very high value treats. So you can use deli meat. Um, you can use some really smelly treats. Um, you can use uh, dehydrated treats, you know, real meat, whatever you want. Um, and just toss them towards your dog. Um, now my body language, according to him, is very specific. I have my side to him. I'm not looking towards him. I'm not Make eye contact, that's very important when you're working with a dog that's very nervous and growly. Um, so say he's next to me right here and he's growling at me. I can either stand my ground and teach him growling is the wrong answer or I can take a step away and give him release of that pressure. When you're first working with your dog, very important to listen to that growl. We never correct a growl because the growl tells us the dog is nervous, they need us to back up, and that's okay. So never correct your dog for growling or showing teeth. If you were growling right now and I were to say stand my ground and teach him I'm not going to leave because if I back up you win, he could very likely increase that pressure. He could increase his, his growling. He could show his teeth. He could start to you know, take in large amounts of air, seem very aggressive, um, and he could bite me. So in the beginning, if your dog is growling before you even have trust with that dog, he growls. I take a step away, no problem. He may stop, he may continue, but I'm telling him, I hear you, I'm gonna give you some room. He's found the treats. <laughs> Good boy! If you, once you get a bond with your dog, then you can start to ask for a little bit more. You can push the limit a little bit more. So say, you know, we bonded a little bit more. He's growling at me. His tolerance is about here. This is the max where he's gonna bite. He's about here. 
he growls a little bit. I continue to look away from him. I don't add extra pressure, but I'm not taking any away. Maybe he's quiet for a split second. Perfect, I can drop a tree, move away. Or I can take a tree and toss it away from me so he gets rewarded for leaving me. Um, that would teach him to move out of a situation that he's fearful of. A lot of times dogs lock up. They just lock up, they don't wanna leave, um, and they just stay in there. So you can teach them to move away from you when they're scared, or you can move away from them. Good boy. Good job. Now step two comes when the two of you are used to each other, um, which you can do as many lessons as you want. Just sit here with your dog, just like this. They can be on leash or off leash, toss treats to them, don't look at them, don't touch them, don't talk to them. Totally ignore them and you're just tossing treats into your living room for no reason. Your dog's gonna go eat it. That's the beginning part of the training. Um, later on when your dog is able to come to you and they're bonded to you and they're more comfortable, then you can start adding more pressure. By pressure I mean this is pressure, social pressure, and physical pressure, which is touch. Good boy! Good boy! So if you go for when you're starting to pet your dog, again sideways, we're both mimicking each other. You can start for their chest, a little bit here, and you take it away. Right here, this is pressure, and you take it away. This is a lot of pressure. I keep petting him, I keep petting him. He's enjoying this, but for a dog who's a little nervous, this is a lot of pressure. They're like a balloon that's gonna pop, and they can bite. So when you pet your dog, a little bit, and then leave him alone. You hear a loud, loud noise? Good boy! That noise can also be considered pressure. Um, pressure is whatever makes them nervous. So he's tolerating me, he's tolerating my petting. If you were a dog that were growly and doesn't like people, this would be perfect. I would leave him alone after a while, I would get up and walk away. Good boy! And that would end our session. And he can follow me if he wants. If he does, I give him a treat. Or he could just go on and do his own thing and that's okay too. Um, Good boy! You don't have to see. <laughs> he doesn't know why did you use the bull. Now he's just trying to please me. So this body language right here is something very important to not do. If I were to see a strange dog and bend over like this, this is very threatening. So if I have a dog that especially doesn't like strangers, don't have a stranger bend over and pet your dog like this. Have them start like this. Just stand next to the dog. They can kneel down. Make sure they don't look at the dog. Make sure they're not making eye contact. They're not staring. They're not reaching out to pet. You have a stranger there. Have them give the dog a treat. Toss a treat around the stranger. The dog can eat it. They get association around the stranger. Good boy. Over time, you can have new people in the house. Um, you can have new people in a park like this, where you meet in a park. Um, if you're ever afraid that the dog is going to bite anybody, then you definitely want to condition the dog to a muzzle. Um, I highly recommend a basketball basket muzzle, which I'll show you all in a moment. Um, but once your dog is conditioned to that, then you can certainly bring them out in public. Uh, have people come say hi to your dog, just toss a treat to them. And don't worry about what people think about if your dog uh, has a muzzle on. You know, that's really just for safety. So quick little recap on what we did here is make sure your dog has space. Make sure they have exit and exit all around them. Make sure they're nice and comfortable. Um, he's just sitting here because he's a good boy. <laughs> but you notice he's not totally relaxed. His mouth is closed. He's using his ears around him. He's smelling. So he's, you know, he's keeping an eye on what's around him. Uh, but he's not totally panicked. So if you see a dog that's showing uh, panicking signals, they're, they're uh, panting a lot whale eyes, things like that, uh, and that's something that you want to remove some of those stressors from here.